Here we go. Um, yo, this is this is one of them interviews. I, I struggled on whether I should even have this conversation, and I struggled for obvious reasons. Um, but anybody who knows me and knows my background, you know I come from that bad boy entertainment system. Um, you know, that has been part of my life for, I don't know, 20 plus years, at least. And this is a gentleman that comes out of that same system. He's also somebody who's been very vocal about his time being in the system. And it hasn't been always in the most positive light. So I struggle with the conversation because on one hand, I'm obviously friends and um, to an extent family with the owner, Sean Diddy Combs. Mark, I know you have had your differences. And the reason I decided to have this conversation is because there's a way to do this intelligently, maturely, and allow you to speak your mind in a way that maybe I don't understand or people who've heard you haven't quite got all the information. So welcome to the show. Right. Bad boy, ex-bad boy recording you, artist, Mark you. Curry. Mark, what up? <laughs> hey, hey, what up, friend? what up, brother? Yeah, and, and, and for the record, what this up, is my friend? longtime friend and brother right here. So, Mark, I know I gave the formal intro, but you know, let, let's just do me and you. Yeah. All right, presidential Rolex, presidential suite. What's going on? That, that that's, right, that's right. That's right. Yo, good to see you, though, Mark. That's you're looking that's good. That's you're that's out here. You're doing your thing. It's good to see you. You're aging well. So, so. You know, before we really get deep into this thing, you know, I, I think my, I didn't realize you was from up top originally. Like, yeah, where? From, where? Yep, yep, yep. New York. Where, where are you from originally? Jersey, huh? My family's. Um, I'm from New, in Harlem, really. Um, 130th in Lexington, and all the wards. You know, I come from up there, like we, uh, the wards, like my, 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 they, we do the, the Harlem, we can cook for people up there in Harlem, my, my cousins, you know what I'm saying? But I'm from New Jersey, Teaneck, New Jersey. That's where I was. But when I was, when I was with Bad Boy, everybody thought I was from LA. No, you, you, I don't know you want to know, I always thought you was from LA and then moved to Atlanta. I, I never knew that you had roots up in New York, New nah. Jersey, tri state area. Oh yeah, tri-state. That's what I am. Tri-state all day. You know what I'm saying? I went to Teaneck. I went to uh, Benjamin Franklin. I went to Lowell Elementary, Teaneck High. Um, well, that's the year I, I came out of there. But then I moved to Mississippi, and then from Mississippi I moved to Georgia. Then that's when I ran into you know the friends, and then I went to California, and then that's when I got signed. But the whole time I was really from um, of New York. The whole time, New, New Jersey. How how long you been rhyming, Mark? I've been rhyming ever since, man, since Brucey B. J J suicide. D -d 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 you know, Brucey B. Um, man, I've been rhyming ever since Sugar Hill Gang. So, so is rapping? Is that something you always Sugar wanted to do? Um, you know, when I first started rapping, it wasn't something that I really had set out to do. It, it was just that I was doing music and people heard like one day Puff heard my music and then he wanted to sign me to the label. But I, I didn't set out to really be like, I'm going to go look for a record deal or nothing like that. I was just doing music. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't trying to do it to, to 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 get a deal. I was a deal myself. I just wanted to get it. You know, we had a record label called Checkmate. You understand me? And um, one of my friends, D1. In the book, we call him D Wayne, but D One, we had the uh, the, the label check, uh, Checkmate Records, and then um, that's when I signed the Puff from there, and, it, and it, it just went down from right there. And he knew, you know, he knew um, 
you knew who he knew. Okay, I, I knew, but, but we have, you know, the audience doesn't know. And the reason I want to be specific in this conversation uh, is because there's so much that, um, you know, has been put out there year over year. So let's just fill in the blanks. Uh, and, and just for just for the record, all right. Come on, by the by the time you got mm -hmm. signed to Bad Boy, Puff was Puff. He might not have been, you know, the Puff Daddy right. with Ciroc or Revolt, but this was a young multi-millionaire executive in the business. So it's not like you just started rhyming. All of a sudden, Puff heard your, your demo tape or he heard your music. Somebody got your music to him. Who was that person? The person that got my music to him was a guy named Mac. Mac. And you know what I'm saying? And he happened to have been one of Puff good friends. And then he was like, yo, Puff want to sign you. So then, um, and then there was another one, D1. It was me and D1. And then D1 and Mac was friends. But then he had called D1 because me and D1 had a whole game plan going. And then he was like, yo, Puff want to sign you as an artist. And then I, at that time, I thought that was, that would be a, a, a very wise decision for me to make because Puffy, was in the in the in the he was in control mm -hmm. in the light at that time. Okay, so, so it was a go, go great ahead. I'm business so sorry. Move. Yeah, it was a great business move. It was you know we thought about it and was like yo, it seemed like you know we wouldn't have to go through as much with the struggle as as far as trying to break in a new label and we can be with someone who already has their foot in the door. And can and assist us in helping some good business decisions, and you know, help accomplish some of these things we was trying to do. That was the main decision. That was the reason why I signed with, with with him. But even when we say sign with him, I got signed to a production deal. So that means I had to sign to the production company first, and then once I signed to the production company, that's when he signed me okay. to the production company. But then at the no, go go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That's like a lot of. There's a lot of artists that I, at that time when I, when I was coming on the Bad Boy, I wasn't the only artist that was signed through a production company, you know. So I was signed through a production company, and then I got the Bad Boy through that. So that means, like, in order for me to discuss business with Puff, I had to discuss with the production company first. Then they talked to Puff, and then Puff would talk to the major label. I couldn't talk nothing to the major label. You know what I'm saying? Which might be in Atlantic or Universal, whatever it may have been at that time. Understood. Yeah. But I had that production. Understood. Yeah. How long was you yeah. how long was you signed to the production mm -hmm. deal before you got your contract with Bad Boy? We we was probably going about two years, two years a year, because at the time we were still producing music. So only thing I would do is sit and I we lit, I, you know, we had a studio on Hollywood and Kawanga uh, in, uh, in, in in Hollywood, so I would stay at the studio and just make music and, and take a shower at Bally's or go home. But I was it was like two years. We was just doing music. And I think I had probably, man, maybe about a good 20, 50 songs at the time. And um, Puff was just listening to him. D-Mac, I mean, you know, Mac was sending them to him. He was liking them. And then, um, but it was, a, it was a while. But before then, I've been doing music all in Atlanta. You know, we, it, you know, I come when I came to Atlanta. That's when I went to high school with Dallas Austin and Divine Stevens, and you know, we went to Lakeshore High School. One of the most crazy things is one time um, I was going with Puff, and we was going over to Dallas Austin house, and he has this house off of Northside Drive, it's like a spaceship, and we went to the house. And when we walked in the house and I'm sitting there, it was Puff didn't even know Dallas knew me like me and Dallas went to school together. You know what I'm saying? It was just a small world. But that's when I came here. I went to school. And bam, that's, you know, and nobody really ever knew I was even from here like that. What? You know. But that's how I got signed, President gotcha. the Rolex Suite. Which year did you actually sign to Bad Boy? Let me see. I think it was in 19... We did Bad Boy for Life in 2000. We did we did forever in ninety nine, right? Puff Daddy Forever was in ninety nine. I believe it was, it was around it? that time. I believe the Forever album. I came in on the Forever album with Lil Kim and Puff on Gangsta Shit, and then I wrote. Uh, I think I wrote. Uh, I think on the Forever, I wrote the PE two thousand single form. 
you know. Um, but that's when I first got okay, signed. Okay, so right ninety nine two thousand is when you, you got know. your deal with Bad Boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, how much did you 2000. sign for? <laughs> that's something that I wouldn't know. I didn't know what I signed for. I think I might have got like maybe twenty five thousand dollars or something like that. But you remember I was signed to a production deal. So the money that I was signed for would go to the production company. The production company would then give me a portion of that money that, like, if you really think about it, the artist was the production company. And I worked for the production company. You know, it was just a way, when you asked me, it's a way to, it was a way to, 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 to give, you know, like to, to do business with certain people, you know, and to pass money. It was like, you know, I, I, I was signed, but um, I was signed to a production company, but then the production company was the one that was responsible for handling my business. It makes that perfect makes sense. sense. Makes uh, sense. We both come from the music industry, so I get it. I yeah. want to make sure the audience gets it. So just for clarity, you're signed right. to a production company. The production mm -hmm. company is, the, is technically your label. Your label then signs to Bad yeah. Boy, which is the distributor for your label, for your label. Okay. Right. Right. So if Puff, if Puff gave me $350,000 for a deal, which I'm sure was someone around, it was somewhere around there, I didn't see the 350. I might only, I might only saw a couple of bucks of that, maybe 20, 25, if that much. So that means that he gave the money to the production company. Production company then gave me that, okay. that portion. At best, you're saying your advance, and, and this is your advance in your pocket, not your recording budget, but your advance in your pocket to make sure you got money to live, money to eat, while you're recording your album was 25000 at best. At, at best. And that's that might be stretching it a little bit. It was, it was real low. But at the time, the money didn't really matter. The opportunity was there. So the opportunity meant more than the money at the time. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, if I'm not getting a whole bunch to sign, I'm not really tripping off of getting a whole bunch of money up front. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you still got to pay it back anyhow. So I wasn't really tripping on getting a whole bunch of money. I just thought that being with Puff, you know what I'm saying? We're going to go put this album out. I'm going to clear that money. I'm not worried about that. You know, even if... The production, if he gave the production company 350000 and then I had to recoup it as an artist. So even if he gave whoever the money goes to, the artist has to recoup that money. So we put out a video, put out a song, all of that. We got to recoup before we make money. So if he gave them $500,000, I would have to recoup that money as an artist before I would see money. So, you know, I wasn't, it's, it's just, it was a... Um, what I always thought about is I wasn't able to be in control over, you know, my destiny the whole time. It was always like it was in somebody else's hands. Somebody else was there to make a the decision for me, which I didn't actually like. I didn't act, I didn't like that. No. OK. I, I, I got to ask you. When you signed to the production company, those two years prior to signing the bad boy, did you have an attorney? Nah, I didn't have an attorney then. I didn't have an attorney then. Oh, hold on, hold on. You know what? It was a time, you know, who put my, Kenny Marsalis, I think, was the one who put my deal together. He might, he, I'm sure Kenny put your, lawyer, your, your deal together once you signed to Bad Boy. I'm not asking that. I'm asking very specifically, when you signed to your production companies two years before even getting your deal with Bad Boy, did you have a lawyer at that point? Nope, didn't have a lawyer. But see, didn't have a lawyer then. But see, the also, before I signed, we had just finished writing the Godzilla Come With Me song, right? That was the first song that I really kind of like wrote. And, and, and it was like one of those things that was imperative that if I didn't sign, they, was, they wasn't going to release the song. Because in order for me, in order for them to release that song, I had to sign my contract. And reasons being, is because um, when I signed the contract, I had to give up a certain percentage of my publishing 
in order to be on, you know, to be on the label or to, to, to uh, actually do the Bad Boy for Life song. So um, when I did the song, it was almost like you got to sign. You got to sign these papers because we can't release this sync that you sign. If I wouldn't have signed and then I would have just been like a free agent with a hit song. Or, or, or if you look at it like a producer who wants to produce a song for Beyonce and he don't have a production deal with the, the company that Beyonce's with, you know what I mean? It's going to be hard for him to get that, that, that deal because, you know, it's a lot of people who already have production deals, producers, that um, they have to recoup. So when they give them that advance on the production deal, they'll give them a shot at Beyonce because they know that they're going to recoup the money that they gave the, the producer. You know what I'm saying? So it's, you know, situation, something similar to okay, that. Okay, I right want to make there. sure I'm understanding this. You know. So please bear with me. I'm going to go backwards. Earlier in the conversation, you said okay. before you got your deal with Bad Boy, you were signed to a production company for two years. Do I have that correct? I wouldn't say two years. We wasn't signed. We was in the we was making. That means like we didn't have no. I wasn't an artist, so I didn't. Nobody signed me. I was gonna be my own man. I'm my own artist. I'm Mark Curry. I'm a label. You know, I wasn't gonna sign a deal with nobody. We was gonna go right on into Jive or something like that and discuss business and just get a deal like that. We did. We wasn't intentionally. I we wasn't trying. You to say sign we? Nobody. Are you talking about right? you and your rap partner, or you and Mac, the production company? Um, which was actually me and D1. We was the original production company. And then Mac happened to be um, one's friend. So then he was Puff's friend. So he's the one that carried the project to Puff. Me and D1 was just straight doing Checkmate checkmate Records okay. out of Los Angeles. And then we, yeah, instead of going forward with the trying to, you know, do the, the uh, indie, then we okay. signed with Puff. We was like, let's not do it. Mark, I, 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 again, for the sake, because this, this, is a, this is a conversation that I want it to be extremely factual, okay? I want it to be factual for mm -hmm. you, and I want it to be factual for me and our audience. So, uh, right. again, for clarity, you and your rap partner, D1, you and your rap partner, D1, are doing what you guys do as artists. You hook up with Mac. You sign that contract with Mac, who essentially is your production company, prior to your production company signing with Bad Boy. My, my question is, excuse me? I said it happened simultaneously. Okay. In order for me to sign, yeah, in order for me to sign the bad boy, I had to sign the production deal. I didn't have a production company, a deal in place, but in order for bad boy to sign me, it was very essential that I sign okay. my production deal contract. So it happened one, two, three. So as soon as I signed the production deal, Puff then had the contract. It was almost I was signed the bad boy, but I was signed through the production company. It was the same, like the same okay. two days. It makes total sense now. It so makes soon, total sense. Earlier, you yeah, said that yeah, you yeah. were with, it took you two years to get your deal with Bad Boy. And that's where my question was. But before we move the conversation on, I asked you very specifically, did you have a lawyer represent you before you signed that production company? You said no. Am I clear? No. No. Very. No. And then also, when I signed the production deal that I did sign, Kenny Marsalis was the acting lawyer. So I, I, Kenny Marsalis was the one that it, it was it was almost like a conflict of interest, if you really want to understand what I'm saying. Because Kenny Marsalis was the one that was giving me the paperwork, and he also was old boy's um, 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 lawyer as well. So when I, that bad boy, for, when we did come with me, if I had to sign, they they wanted to make sure I definitely had my contract signed. Because if not, then they wouldn't been able to get a piece of that publishing. So you know when I signed, that when you signed the deal, you saying, okay, I'm gonna give up X amount of my publishing to sign with this company, and this is how much of an advance you get for it, right? Okay. So in order for me that when I was doing that song, in order for them to even release that song, they was making sure that I signed that contract. Okay. That's how that now, happened, man. 
this is not abnormal for, for anybody for anybody who who doesn't understand business or doesn't understand the music industry you wrote a song that was going to go on a major blockbuster movie soundtrack you co-wrote come with me correct yeah okay yeah is that yeah. is that the yeah. record that had um is that Nicole Scherzinger who was on that record that we it was had, Led Zeppelin, uh, was Led okay. Zeppelin. Robert okay. did it cashmere. Hear my crime, in my cause, yeah, cashmere. That's when Puff remixed that song and was um, it was with the Godzilla. He was walking in New York, the buildings all okay. getting destroyed and all it is that. it is perfect. That song. It is perfectly normal for somebody who is going to to invest in you, invest in your future, to say, look. I'm about to, we, we, we haven't even started our business career yet. And I'm about to put you on not just any record, but it's going to be a single off of a major motion picture soundtrack to the movie Godzilla. It, it, it is not abnormal whatsoever, right. Mark, that Diddy at that time would require you sign a contract. That's fair ball. And I'm sure at that time, mm -hmm. everything was good between you guys, correct? Everything was just good. Even signing okay, at the beautiful. time, everything was fine. You know? You know? But if we all live up to our parts of it, you mean, like, I just didn't sign that deal to do this, that one song. I signed that deal to do an album and plenty of more songs. So after I wasn't getting that what I needed, like I wasn't getting the attention that I needed from the label, it was almost like I was uh, 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 on the shelf. You know, they, they was putting other artists and putting uh, money into other artists and more attention into other artists than they would do me. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like on the back shelf, just waiting on my turn. Understood. You know, and that's one... You know, that's what I really didn't like. That's when I started okay. writing. So, so to my knowledge, and you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I want to go over some of the records that you were on during that time. Uh, 1999 to the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. You were on um, the Forever, okay. the, the, the Puff Daddy um, Forever album, correct? Okay. You yeah, you yeah, was correct. on Dangerous MCs. Um from from Notorious B.I.G.'s Born Again Project, correct? Okay, you yep, were on yep, Down yep. the Line um, on and, and Muscle Game, if I got my facts right, on, on Black Rob's Life Story, his debut album, correct? Okay, did you do correct, any ghostwriting that we don't know about? That's right. Yeah, I ghost wrote um, on Puff Verses on um, like Down the Line. We say uh, at nightfall, um, that's when it all begins. Be prepared. We can't allow no loose ends. I wrote that. Um, uh, let me see what else. Yeah, I wrote that song. Um, that's when I first started. Like, really, I didn't even know I was being a ghostwriter. I just knew I had hot songs. Every time I had a, something hot, Puff would be like, I, I need that. So he was like, Playboy, can you do this verse for me? And you and we get in, we did it down the line. So I didn't even know at the time I was ghostwriting. If you, I didn't even know, like, I wasn't really aware of ghostwriting. You know what I'm saying? I knew who Source Money was, but I didn't look at him as a ghostwriter. I looked at him like an artist that was signed to The Rock. You know, because remember Source Money was over there with Jay-Z and them. So I didn't look at him as like somebody who just writes music and comes upon an artist session and helped him. So, yeah. I was, uh, when I had a hot song, every time I would have a hot song, as soon as I would play it for Puff, if it was hot, he'd be like, I want to buy it. And he'll buy it. It would have been my song, but then he'd turn it into his song. Some of them we never gotcha. heard of. Uh, just for the record, of, yeah. every time you ghostwrite wrote, did you get a check? What, what did Definitely. those checks look like, if you don't mind me Definitely asking? got a check. I think, I, man, I think Puff would buy a song for me for like 25000 if he liked the song I would do, he would buy the song for it like that much. And um, for albums, I think maybe 2,500, you know, 2,500, 1,500, something sometimes like that. It just depends on if he buying the song or was I just being a part okay. of the song. 
You so, know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he didn't buy so all. So, if he this- bought a complete song from you, that was 25000 If he, he just had you write a verse, it was 2500 1500 somewhere in there. Yeah, so, yeah, it wasn't, it was, yeah, yeah, it was like, it wasn't, um, it was much appreciated. Don't think it wasn't, but it wasn't as much as buying the song from me. You know what I'm saying? Like gangster shit. When I did gangster shit, I already had gangster shit before I went into the studio with them up there. So he bought those ver- he bought that song for me at that time. Um, Bad Boy for Life, I had a verse. So when I did the verse for Bad Boy for Life, I didn't I don't even think I got a check for doing that verse. It just ended up on I did a few songs on there. And I made a, I think I might have ended up doing like maybe four or five songs on it, the um, P. Diddy and the Family album. I don't remember. I don't, I didn't think I got an advance. Okay. There were other records that you were either uh, wrote for or you appeared on in the early 2000s. Um, You were on something like six tracks from the Saga Continues. That's Puff's follow-up album. Um, You know, you, you were also on... The record Blast Off, Lonely, I Don't Like That. Um, and, and obviously the one that the world knows you for is Bad Boy for Life. Correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. That's 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 just the track record. Right. Sounds like me. Uh, you know, you know and what... these are just things that I'm rattling off um, just from my notes. But, you know, the, the more I think about it, wasn't you on that Training Day soundtrack? Yeah, the Training Day soundtrack we did. This is not America with David Bowie. That was a big song. So every time Training Day is 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 aired, you know, we get a small little publishing check. You know, but it's training. G Dep. Um, G Dep. Let's get it remix. You was on that as well. To lace the track up with sixteen bars of crack, bring it back from the hood. I'm. From the hood, we wherever we at, get the money. Ain't a nigga no one taking nothing from me. I'm hungry, no, I'm hungry for it. I'm chasing niggas across the board, and if they want war, we can war. That's the G Dep, the uh, Let's Get It remix. I did that one. Okay, we we're talking from '99 to about '03, '04. You're busy. Mm-hmm. You, you you, I understand that your album didn't come out, but mm-hmm. you're busy at this time. You're making right. music, you 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 are getting checks. It's not like you are sitting in the corner. At what point did you feel I'm doing my part, and unfortunately the label is not living up to their obligation to me? Because mm-hmm. it sounds like although your album didn't drop and you didn't have an official single, the mm-hmm. label kept you busy and kept you at least with money in your pocket. Mm, okay, now let me give you this one. I think Bad Boy for Life came out in 2000, right? In 2000, yes. in 2000, I was in my house in Atlanta, and everybody was in Miami working at the Circle House. And Todd, at the time, was Faith's husband, her husband. And he called me, because I knew him, and he called me and said, Mark, why are you not here in California? I said, what? I mean, in Florida. I said, what's going on? He said, we all out here working on Puff's album. I said, ain't nobody call me. He said, well, you need to get on the plane and come up here yourself. And I got on the plane and I went up there and I I went and got in my own hotel and I was um, riding in the cab and then I saw Puff riding down the street in the Bentley and the cab, I had the cab pull up to him and then he told me to come to the studio. I went to the, I got in the cab, went to the studio and when I got to the studio, everybody was there working. And he came out and said, Mark Curry, the reason why I didn't really have you out here is because I was thinking about dropping you from the label. So I was like, okay, that explains why nobody called me. That that explains. So then uh, he said, well, I'm going to give you a a, a song. And if you can take this song and make it work, then we'll we'll figure it out from there. So he gave me this song, Bad Boy for Life. I took that song and rode around Miami in somebody's car because I didn't even have nowhere to write in the studio. So the person, they was like, I'll ride you around, rode around, came back to the studio. The Bad Boy for Life song was a hit. They said, go down to this studio and record it. I went to another studio, recorded it. Then he had this track. Uh, he said, what you think about this one? I got on that track. But as far as I'm concerned, if I didn't 
take the initiative to get out of my bed and get and book my own self on the flight and book my own hotel room and carry myself out there, that none of that would have ever happened. That was just by me taking a step out there. It was nobody thought about like, you know, let's it's, it, the way it may sound is like, hey, you was an artist and you know, you was on the label and they was giving you checks and this, you know, I had to really fight for for, for my stance on that label. You know, I, it's like I had to always, you know, you had Loom, you had g Depp, everybody was coming to be number one and coming out first. And I always had to sit back and wait and wait and wait. You know what I'm saying? And I might have been signed longer than a lot of the other artists. I was signed longer than Loom. I was signed longer than g Depp. And when they came on to the label, they were able to get their albums off. I was still in the background waiting for this album. And it never happened. And that's when I always told them, I was like, yo, if we don't, if you don't feel like this music thing is going to work and I'm going to always, you know, if I'm not going to have this album, let's just, let's just cut this out and let's talk money. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, if we're not going to have an album and you're not going to fulfill your obligations that you signed me as, you know, for for artists or why you wanted me as an artist, let's just leave that alone. Let me walk and try to go make my life, you know, the career work with somewhere at another label and maybe let's just talk money because that it, it was a time when i was just real adamant about whatever the losses were whatever it may have been that i had to go the reason why i don't have no no whatever no album you know let's look at when i didn't have an album the things that you know uh, me being the artist that it prevented me from doing like i wanted to be a better father not saying that the music had anything to do with how my fatherhood situation would go. But I definitely wanted to provide more. I wanted to be more of a provider than the provider that I was, you know? So it kind of like stopped my growth a little bit, but as far as me growing, I wasn't gonna only grow by that. You know, I was gonna, I was gonna look at other avenues to make sure that I was staying on top. You know, I didn't put all my eggs in that one basket. Okay, I want to go backwards for a second. Mm -hmm. You said you went to Miami when Puff was working on his album. Right. You said everybody was recording there. Who else was recording? Oh, man, you had Loon there. g Depp was there. Faith was there. New Edition was there. Um, um, you had Low Writers, Mario Winan. Man, everybody was there. Everybody from the, who, from the camp. Hood fellas was there. We all took a picture. Remember when we did the picture in Miami for the side? I remember it well. Family, all at the dining room table. Sherry Dennis was there. Everybody was there because he was working on the P Diddy and the Family album. The saga continues. And and if you know when you think about it, Prez, I'm sure you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, at that time, that was when he did the um, Puff Daddy, and he sold seven million units on the No Way Out. And then he went to get a new deal. And then he was going to be the artist coming off of the new label he had. He just struck a new, like a new deal, I believe. And then um, when he did the Bad Boy for Life video, he had kind of put everybody's budget money into this one song. You know what I'm saying? And then that's where everybody, that's where my budget was. Because I remember he used to always tell me that, you know what I'm saying? We gotta, we we gotta, we gotta, uh, we gotta all cross our fingers and make sure that this album sells. Cause if not, it was like we're gonna be in trouble. So his album had to sell in order for us to, um, to I guess, for Bad Boy to look good. So that's why he did a uh, 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 saga continues. P Diddy and the family. So he put everything on one album. So it was like under one budget. So when okay. you, act, yeah. You look at when, my when you say when you say in Miami he asked you to go write a record. Did he give you the beat? Did he give you the bad boy for life beat to write to? Har Pierre did. Har Pierre was the one who mainly believed in me. And Har was Har wasn't gonna let Puff drop me. Har was like Har knew I what about the skills. Har knew Mark Curry was 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 you know something not to you know, he was he was definitely something. And so he was the one that was like, um, try the bad boy for life. And when I did it, it was almost like, it, it, to me, 
the only probably reason why he let me get on that song was because other people liked it. And if you gave him an opportunity to when, 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 for, for clarity, when you say like he, hard, are we hard. talking about Diddy or are we talking about Hard Pierre? Harv Pierre, when Harv Pierre heard me do that, that bad boy for life, it was really him that got me on that song. But if you would have left it up to Diddy, it would have been Loom, Black Rob, and Diddy. It wouldn't okay, have been stop there for one back. second. Stop there for one second. How much of that song did you write? Did you write the hook? Did you go write Puff's verse? Or did you only write your verse? I only wrote my verse on that song. And Bristol okay. did the hook. But so, you, when go I, ahead. I got there to Miami, Bristow couldn't get, uh, he couldn't land a track. So every, it's a lot of people who was there working for a long time that couldn't get on one song. So I went in and started writing for some, like Bristow was my guy, man. I really, you know, rest in peace, Bristow. So I went and started writing songs for him so he can get on the song. And then we went and did the, um, the, uh, member, um, the, the, the 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 thing we did on the album is me and Bristow. Look at the credits. Um, I helped, you know, that's what I helped do then. So when I went in, it was more like I went and did like maybe six. I kind of like was able to to pioneer and lead that record, that album. I was able to really get in there after I was gonna get dropped. I was able to get in there and say, Puff, here's some vocals for you. Here's how you need to say this. This is what our song need to be about. Listen to what Jay Z and the, what they doing at the Rock, you know. Compare our songs to theirs. Compare, you know. It was like that. But um, to answer your question, you know, going back, just to make sure I did, um, I, I don't think that I would. Like he said, he was going to drop me from the label, and I had to do whatever, everything that I had to do at that time. It wasn't like somebody was liking me. You know, we we looking for a reason to get rid of you. So I, I was giving them more reason why you couldn't get rid of me because my skills. So that's when I poured it out on them. I said, let me tell you about these songs I got. While you saying you're going to drop me, watch this. Bang. Oh, you're going to drop me? Bang. I just kept hitting them with songs. And that's what the best, the best way to always, you know, and I always say, my energy was the best way to explain yourself. You don't have to explain yourself through talking and saying, hey, you want to drop me and you know, let's just do music. Let the music speak for itself. And the music was undeni und undeniable. You know, my lyrics undeniable. So you couldn't deny them. Okay, before we move forward, I want to um, shout out Harv Pierre. You mentioned yeah. that name. Everybody who uh, follows music, especially during that, that golden age of hip hop, Harv Pierre is a legend in the game. He was uh, president of Bad Boy. He was also the head of A&R yep. at that time that we're talking about. So shout to Harv. Mark. Yeah, big shout out Harv. Because I, I eventually want to take this conversation to where did things go wrong. So you get down to Miami. Everybody's working on the Saga Continues album. It, you just literally listed the entire roster of Bad Boy 2.0. And when I say Bad Boy 2.0, this is after the first era of Bad Boy, the Notorious B.I.G., the Locks, Faith Evans, Total, um, and, and all the, you know, Mace. Mm -hmm. After that crew, you guys get ushered in. Um, starting with Sean, Carl Thomas, um, Black Raw, Black Raw was... was Black Rob was, was bad boy 1.0. But where I'm going with this is you come down to Miami on your own dime. Mm -hmm. You hook up with Puff. Puff gives you the chance to write something. But he also was 100% honest with you. I didn't bring you down here because I don't believe in you. I was actually thinking about dropping you. Right. How can you be mad at somebody who told you as brutally honest <sighs> as humanly possible why you weren't there mm -hmm. and what he had in mind for your future? Right. I knew it was personally something else because if, if I'm not hot enough to be my own artist, then I wrote songs for you. 
So how can you can't tell me how to write songs if I wrote your songs? So it's like you can't judge my talent. You can't tell me if I'm good or not. I write. I write for you. You write. You say the words that I say. You live in my words. So if you live in my words, you can't tell me you're gonna drop me. I thought that was the biggest joke in the world. I laughed at it. You know what I'm saying? You can't drop something that. You know what I mean? You can't drop something that's hot. Even if you want to drop me, it's okay. That's fine. I could go. I could do it somewhere else. I'm not going I'm not going to stop and still like to this day. If you hear the music, I'm I still do the same kind of music I was doing back then and the music I do now is just as good as it was when I did it then. Still a okay. still something to be reckoned. With. Yeah. Still I'm still a problem out here. <laughs> you know, and that's Mark, how it always so, yeah. You you you're an artist. You mm -hmm. should feel like you're hot. Nobody can tell you that you're not hot. I get it 100%. But it's his label, it's his budget, and being quote unquote hot is subjective. You might be hot to millions of people. Mm -hmm. But if you're not hot to the man who's cutting the checks, right? You know, but, he but has then, the right you know, to say no. Oh, hold for one second. Hold for one second. This man, and again, I'm not defending him. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to be objective mm -hmm. in this conversation. So if this man thought enough of you to initially sign you to the label, and then after signing you, a year goes by, two years go by, three years go by, he says, you know what? My, my, my initial thoughts on this artist, I thought he was hot. I was willing to vest hundreds of thousands of dollars into him. Mm -hmm. A few years later, I don't feel that way. Right. Why is it an issue if he at that point says, you know what? I'm going to cut my losses. I'm a businessman. Sometimes right. you win, sometimes you lose. Right. So with that case, Sean Press, when I was going into the office and I was asking like Francesca Spiro, you remember her, right? Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I remember asking Francesca Spiro, what's going on with my deal? And finally they started being honest with me and told me I didn't have a recording budget. So then I started wondering where happened, what happened to my recording budget? That means what happened to my recording budget? I ain't had, they spent my recording budget. I didn't have no money to record an album. That's what happened up there. But 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 that's not that's not totally accurate, Mark. And and I'm only saying because I'm, I'm a record label you know, executive. I didn't have a no, I understand. But recording budgets are allocated. Recording budgets are allocated when there's t when it's time to do an album. Right. If if he had if if he or Harv or, or or the label as a whole had no intention of allowing you to record a budget, there wouldn't be a recording budget. Yes, you would have gotten Over. your advance. Uh, hear me out, because mm -hmm. I'm just trying to educate you. Yes, right. you would have gotten your advance, but an advance is far different than a recording budget, which is also far different than a marketing and promotion budget. So you not having a recording budget doesn't imply that the label spent your recording budget on something else. Oh, the label. Do you understand that? Yeah, I'm definitely that. But then you have, you got to remember this one also. How I signed to Puff, I signed him through a friends of his. You don't think that he gave the friends no money? So there was some money this past, it just didn't come my way. And when you look at sometimes how a lot of people do business, when they want to give business to someone else, they definitely going to sign your artist through. Just like uh, Boys in the Hood was signed through Block. Block entertainment. You understand? So at the end, Puff didn't really have to get boys in the hood no money. He just get the money to Block. Let Block do it. Right? Now, if Block mess up that money, then that mess up the whole boys in the hood recording project. Right? So it's no, it's no problem because those things are like water under the bridge. We can't bring that back. Those are things that I had to learn to deal with and accept, and I've done it. You know, I moved on from that. I don't I don't look and point fingers and say he gave you this money or he did this or what happened. It's almost like when you audit, you can audit and say, let's let's do an audit on my budget and let's let's figure out where my money went to. You know what I'm saying? And just one of those kind of things, man, it's just business.
You understand? No, it's a lot because, of because because you 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 you're partially right, Mark. And and and, and I want to make sure that this conversation is very factual. It's not opinion based. Based. Mm-hmm. You you keep bringing up that you were signed to a production company, which was essentially your label. Your label was signed to Bad Boy. If any monies went to your label, why is it that you have an issue with Puff at Bad Boy okay. and not your label? That's the part that, that I'm very confused about in this moment. Right. Because we, we could say it like this, then. In order for Puff to give money to Mac, he did it through an artist. So he used me as being an artist to give him some money to for a production deal. Now, what he did with the money, how much money he gave him, I don't have no clue, right? But sometimes people will do that just to give somebody some money. It's just, that's just the way it always goes. You know, they'll give you a production deal and never do nothing with your artist. I seen a- Okay have a production deal and they never you know what I'm saying okay so so, so you know, I have to I, I, I gotta ask you a very simple question mm-hmm. why are you not upset with your production company because even if everything that you're saying is a hundred percent accurate the fault I'm, I'm having I'm having a tough time understanding your logic that you would bypass the company yeah. that you signed to that you signed to Without a lawyer, mm-hmm. and and just go directly past them and say, "Look, pup, you're the devil." Nah, yeah, and, but and, and, go ahead. Production company wasn't the reason why I signed to the production company. The production company was the reason why I signed, so I could sign the pup. So I never looked at the production company like the production company can help me do anything. I looked at signing the Puff and I said, this is the agreement we have. The agreement was I'm going to be an artist on this label. This is what we're going to do. And we're going to put out an album. That was the agreement. And that was between Puff, not me and the, 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 the production company. All right. So the only thing I was the only thing I'm doing the whole time is just making sure we all live up to our word. You know, a man, a man is nothing without if his word is nothing. So. The word was never nothing. The word never. Whose me- word was never nothing? Buff word was never nothing to me. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Because again, yeah. Yeah. I got no dog in this fight, uh-huh. and I know it might sound like I'm defending him, but I'm really not. I'm, I'm literally, uh, trying to have an objective conversation. Mm-hmm. So, no matter what it was that you thought, or no matter what your intentions were. You did not sign directly to Bad Boy. And, and you know, you could have had the best intentions, but you made a decision as an artist. You made a decision as an adult. You made a decision as a businessman to sign a, 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 a contract with a third party com- company who then signed to Bad Boy. And no matter what it was that you believed in your heart or no matter what your intentions were, you were still bound by a contract that you signed as a grown man. As a grown man. Yes, for sure. You know what I'm saying? But one thing I tell you though, Sean Press, and and some people try to be slick. You know, I call it pencil. You could be slick by a contract or whatever, but I, I, I don't honor I take about your word. I don't really care nothing about it. I have a contract that says that I could never talk about it when he did the publishing. I, I, I got a very, very basic question. If you got signed in the end of the 90s, from 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, you're eating. You're eating. You're on projects. You might fight to get on these projects, but you're on projects, you're earning money. When exactly did things just go left? When did you decide I want out? Or Mm -hmm. when were you actually dropped? It was when, right, it was when when I was going into the office and I was going into the bad boy office and I I was talking to them more about my deal. Like, um, well, I wanted to go to the studio 
in Atlanta. I wanted to, you know, have them pay for the studio time. I wanted to go do a mix a song or something. Or I got songs that I'm working for, working on with producers that, you know, the producers aren't getting paid. So they was like, you know, it, it, it was hard for me to do business. I was working with producers that was asking me about, you know, when they're going to get their money. You understand, like a producer gets paid, so they, they wasn't, none of that was happening. So I would go to the label and talk to them about that. And that's when I had been going in the office so long talking to Francesca, and we became pretty cool friends. And she told me, I'm going to be honest with you, you don't have a recording budget. And that was just it. I was like, all right. So then that's when I knew. I said, okay. That's when I said to Puff, I said, either we're going to fix it, or I'm going to write a book and I'm going to get my publishing another way. And I kept telling them, this is what I'm going to do if we didn't figure out some kind of way, right? And the way that we were supposed to figure out never happened. Then you got to also remember that the people, a lot of my friends that I had that I was signed to to the label, sometimes they would call Puff and, 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 and make some really harsh threats sometimes at the whole label just by the way the business was going. And that played a, a big part in why Puff was like, you know what, I feel like dealing with you is cause your, it's a problem. I'm having problem with your friends. You understand, they calling me, making these threats, da 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 So why don't you talk to your partners? I'd be like, yo, don't call up to the office no more and make no more threats like that because it's going to make business hard. So that's that, a lot of that stuff played in what happened with my career over there, bad boy. You know, it wasn't like I'm going to drop you because you're not good. I, it might have been like I'm going to drop you because your friend keeps calling up here threatening me. Again, Mark, you knew for some time, you know, Puff didn't believe in you as an artist. So now on top of him not believing in you as an artist, you have friends calling a label and they're making threats. Right, but then, but, but, but then when we say... He didn't believe in me as an artist. I didn't believe in him as a boss. So it goes both ways. It's not a way that he can pass. Like if he passed a judgment on me, I'm going to pass one on him no matter how much money he got, no matter what. If Again, if I wrote a song for you and I made you hot, you can't tell me nothing about making myself hot. So I didn't believe in him as a boss. As the same you didn't believe in didn't, him. You didn't, didn't believe in him as a boss in which way? In the way that, because if, 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 if he didn't believe in me as an artist, then I didn't believe in him as a boss. That's what I'm saying. And, that, and what I mean by that, that means that you're not able of making good decisions for me as, as an artist. Like, it was times when they said they didn't know how to market me. They didn't know what to do. You know, like when they want to give you a gimmick. And they just didn't understand. I think I was just a little bit ahead of my time. If you ask me, I was way ahead of my time. Right, it was hard for them to understand me. Even with all the okay. music I did, yeah. You, 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 you came out on that um, uh, "Bad Boy for Life" single. Mm -hmm. Did that change anything for you in terms of the label saying, "Yo, we got to pay closer attention to this guy"? Nah, even when people was like, "Yo," um, when they listened to the song. And they was like, yo, the dude on the third verse was the, he's the hot that he made the song hot, and that was me. That's not what Puff wanted to hear. If you ask me at the time, you know what I'm saying? Because he wanted to be hot, or or, or you know, it's like Mark Curry is hot. And obviously, if I was hot, then I would be the next rapper that you would probably want to focus on putting the album out on, right? But after Bad Boy for Life, that's when they did. I need a girl. You know, Bloom did the album after after. Uh, bad boy for life right and if i was hot and i was on bad boy for life and the, and the world knew i was hot i didn't even get an album then it went to loom all right so and again you know i'm, I'm getting older my memory might not be a hundred percent bad boy for life came out it was a mega hit right that record was was damn near the record that brought p diddy back you know, once he started getting cold out there. Right. That record put Bad Boy back on the map and it put him as an artist back on the map. Right. That right. record had Puff, it had Puff, it had you, and it had Black Rob, correct? Correct. All right. Black Rob still 
got an album that came out. His album he didn't came just out get an, he did, Hear me out. He didn't just get one al- album. He got a second album. So I, I don't was know it on that it's personal. Was, it, was, me? It, was his second album on Bad Boy or was it on the other label he went to? No, it was on Bad Boy. Really? Okay. Yeah, he has, on, two, he has two albums on Bad Boy. Right. And before before the first album I was on, so when we when we say the first round of Bad Boy versus the second round, which was Loon and Deppenham, I was around the first one too. Because that's, okay, so, that's when we did all of the Black Rob songs. That's when Muscle Game and all that came into play. That's when Biggie was still living, right? That's when the locks, Craig Mack, all of that was still going around. So I was around from that. So then after... We did even gangster shit um, on Puff's album. After we did gangster shit, I still didn't get that opportunity to have that album. You know, Not but, saying- but he didn't believe in you. That that that's the that's the. I, I think that that's the part that nah, that's getting nah, lost nah. in this. Yeah, I think the part that really might we might really really get lost. Is when I when I because I, I it's not about he didn't believe in me he didn't have no budget money for me right no I, that's that, not accurate yeah, that's not you, accurate all right so Crash I'm gonna tell you what yes. he did you remember when he took Sherry Dennis budget he took my budget he took everybody budget he signed as an artist and he put out that album and he put out Saga and he went and recorded that video Bad Boy for Life and it was over budget and the record label got mad at him for recording that song and using that budget like that and that's why they dropped him from that deal I'm telling you you don't remember that and then he, he had no. to go find the whole yeah right after no and 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 life. you know just just for the sake just for the sake of of fairness I don't remember it and okay. you could absolutely be right I'm telling what? you I'm doing, yes yes okay fair yes. enough I, I'll yes. give you that yes 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 I'm telling you that's what but happened he, even if he pulled from your budget, mm-hmm. he didn't pull an album worth of money from from your budget. I mean, he may think, have. Go ahead. Just think about Sherry Dennis. I remember when you said it when you said it to me last night. Remember that song was big, right? Sherry is dope. No Sherry, Sherry yes. is so super talented. What happened to her budget? What about uh uh uh, uh Tammy? Remember Tammy? Yes, I do. Beautiful voice, right? What happened yep. to her budget? Remember Kane? Kane C. Off? Yes. What happened to his budget? Of course. Remember Hoodfellas? What happened to their budget? See, I'm telling you what happened. Everybody budget went on this one album he was doing. I, I think you're mistaken. I do. And I, and the only reason and, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna chalk this up to maybe you just don't understand the other side. Cause it doesn't work as simple as you're making it sound. Oh, um, Mark. What you mean he can't he can't he can't allocate and spend the money the way he wants to at his own label? Cause he's the boss, right? So that means if he's the boss, he can make some boss decisions. If he wanna take everybody budget and go record Saga Continues, which he did, that's why it's like a compilation. Puff was it was no way in the world he was ready to come back and sell seven million records the way he did on No Way Out, because No Way Out had Biggie on there. And Biggie had just died in the commission. So the whole thing that him selling that album was based off of Biggie, and it was based off of uh, something with, with Mace, right? So his album yes. sold those units. They, they sold because of that. He, there was no way he was going to come back and do it again. And he even knew he wasn't going to sell uh, 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 7 million records. It's times I know him. I know him. I, I remember, you know, where he just didn't even want to do a, another album because, you know, when you fail after you did good, you'd be like, I don't want to put nothing out there and fail. I remember... Cause I had some relationships with people in the office too. You know, it wasn't just, I'm an artist. I, I was also a friend of a few people too. And I remember when he did that album, that's the reason why he was like, yo, if, if, if this pray that this album right here is a success because if it, if it doesn't work, we all in trouble. And I used to sit and be like, damn, what is he talking about? And then that's when I realized what was going on. And that means, you know, he was like, if this doesn't work, we're in trouble. And it didn't work. And as a result, we was in trouble. And it left him looking for another deal to back him. We lost the whole deal behind that. And again, Mark, the more I listen to you, the more I'm thinking to myself, maybe you just don't understand the other side. 
you know, anybody who's right. in business and, and, and just hear me out. It doesn't matter what business you're in. If the products that you're putting out are not selling, you have to, at some point, make business decisions. And what I mean by that is you named a ton of artists that never came out. At that mm-hmm. time, the locks were leaving the label. Mace had retired. Yep. Biggie passed away. Black Rob just dropped his album. Faith was in between albums. There was no revenue that was coming in to the label. So one of the Definitely. biggest artists on the label, who's Puff, I'm sure whether it was for selfish reasons or whether it was for a business reason, saying to himself, yo, I sold 7 million records on my first album. Even if my second album does bad, maybe I'll crack three and a half million and that can save the label. You don't think it is a business decision or just intelligent to bank on, to hear me out, to bank on the product, whatever the product might be. In this case, it was him to bank on the product that is going to bring the revenue into the company so that I can put out all the other artists, so that I don't lose my distribution deal, so that I can continue building the next generation of artists. That that just sounds right. like business. It's not personal. No, or or it can it can sound like business. But then I could tell you this much: if you ever go into a business deal with a a a a, 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 a person who's also not only they are the uh, boss, they are artists too. And they have to put their attention into themselves sometimes before they put it into you. I would never want to sign to another deal like that ever again. Because, you know, if you look at it, the first song that we did off is Bad Boy for Life. What was the next single off that album? I don't remember. Did I don't remember, honestly. I don't remember. But but here's the deal, Mark. It was, oh, oh it was the D.I. Yeah, was it Diddy. Okay. That was the next you, you, You're bringing that up to say what, though? What I'm saying is um, that just shows also to me that the album was really based on Puff. It was just, it was Puff. But it was, it being was signed his to album. A label. It was a compilation, it was but it label. was his album. Just by me doing vocals for him and writing songs for him, I tell you what, I'm going to be honest with you. Puff sucks as a rapper. There it is. He sucks as a rapper. I never liked when I went into the studio and I wrote songs for him. I can tell the way he say the vocals after I wrote it for him. My references that I wrote on Godzilla Come With Me sound way better than when he... Matter of fact, I didn't even like the song after he recorded it, right? Because he didn't say it the way he didn't deliver it the way I deliver. He didn't say the words the way I say the words. I'm the one who wrote the words. So no matter what kind of businessman he is, I'm a businessman too. And I'm the I'm in the business to write the music. So that means like, we both going to have to respect each other at some point in time. I didn't like him as an artist. So if he's putting all of the energy into him, I could see if he's putting it into himself, if he think he's dope or he think the people want him. But, you, you know, and, and if you ask me, he was making himself the artist. He was making the people like him as an artist. You know, you know, Puff, if you ask me, always wanted to be the one that had this in the spotlight. It's just my opinion. I, I, I think don't he think, always wanted to I don't put think himself. anybody... I don't think anybody would disagree with you there. I don't. I don't think right. anybody right. as a fan, anybody who was behind the scenes could disagree with you. But right. again, again, just like you just stated your opinion and you said you think he sucks as an artist, he essentially mm-hmm. told you that to your face by saying, mm-hmm. I was thinking about dropping you. So why, well, okay, hear, hear me mistake. out. Why, why is it mm-hmm. why is it okay for you to feel that way, but it's not okay for him as a businessman who is in the business of making right. music and music and artistry is very subjective. Why is it not okay for him to say, "I think you suck," and even though I invested time, money, 
and energy into you, I'm thinking mm-hmm. about dropping you mm-hmm. from my label. And there was one other right. thing that, I, that I, I, go go ahead because there's another place I want to go. Right. Um, Prez, I broke up with a girl before. I told her I just didn't want to be with her no more. You understand? It's the same kind of thing, man. You understand? But you know what I mean? It's 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 for for him to tell me again that he was gonna drop me from the label because he didn't believe in me. And but you believe in me enough for me to write them songs for you and make you them hits. So it's okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes we're not in the position to judge people. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes my like to this day. I say, even if he say that, let's, to this day, I still got good music. I never stopped. Let the good music speak for itself, right? I told you, I was, I was before my time. The music that I was writing, the subject, everything that I was on was before my time. They didn't even know how to handle it, right? So I realized I was before my time. So it's not like, and then if we say we not, I, right, I go song for song with him right now, to this day. I will do a night of verses or whatever you want to do. There's no way in the world he could ever see me on doing anything music wise, you know, and it can, it could be an opinion, but we could also turn that into a battle because I can, I can, I can tell it to you. It's a fact. I got new songs right now. You hear secrets, the new song I did. I heard it. You hear, I did a new I am. I got a few other joints coming in, you know, and that's me. Mark. Yes, sir. Let, let, let's move the conversation forward, if you don't mind. Okay. Right? I, I know you were great friends with um, Black Rock. Yep. Yeah. Both as label mates, but also just as human beings. Yep. You would have, I, I believe you were the first one to let the world know that Black Rob had passed. Mm-hmm. How long did you know he was sick? Um... I knew Black Rob was sick since he was going through dialysis through the whole time. Um, I used to take him to dialysis. Um, in fact, they used to call me when Rob used to have to go to dialysis, and they called me when it was time for him to get picked up. So I used to drop him off and pick him up. Not through the whole the whole thing, but when he lived in Atlanta and lived with me, that's what my responsibility was to him. He wanted to live in Atlanta. So... I told him he can move down, move into my crib, and then every day, that's what I used to have to do. I, I, you know, I knew Rob was sick way back then when we was still um, when he had lupus. Remember, he would swell up every now and then. I just didn't know how bad it was, but then as time gradually, you know, when it just gradually got worse and worse. But um, I've been knowing he was sick for a long time. You know, I've been knowing, I knew he was sick enough to where he couldn't miss dialysis. It was very important for him to go to dialysis because once you're on dialysis, if you don't um, report and do the things that they they ask you to do, sometimes they they won't want to give you the treatment no more. You understand? So there was a time where they didn't want to give him treatment no more because he wasn't going on time all the time. He would miss certain days. So, yeah. I've been knowing for a long time that he had a, that sickness. You you know, I, I saw a, a video mm-hmm. right before Rob passed. I believe it was you who posted it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob was in, in the backseat of your car. Mm-hmm. Um, is that not accurate? Yeah, I, I never posted. When Rob was going through his sickness, I didn't want anybody uh-huh. posting him and showing him the way that he was looking when he was sick. So it was another person that, you know, he was with. Name is not important to say, but um, they they were trying to book shows for him and get him on the road. But it was it was it was hard to book shows for somebody who was going through dialysis. So, you know, he, he had to focus more on getting well before he could go on the road. But they was putting him on the road. And doing things. So a lot of times when you were seeing Rob being recorded at in those times, other people was recording him. And I didn't approve of that. I was like, don't record him in this state right here. You know what I'm saying? And don't make don't it's like more people was trying to, you know, Rob was at the fair, had him at the fair. I had Rob at the mall after he didn't want to go to dialysis. Rob needed to be in dialysis. But anyhow, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't put a picture. Um, matter of fact, Sean Perez, I'm going to tell you something. I had a video, right? 
of when Rob was in the hospital, when the doctor came out and they told me that they wanted me to come into the room where Rob was. And they said that, you know, unfortunately that there was going to be nothing that they could do to bring him back. But they showed me, they was like, we're trying. And they were sitting there trying. And then they gave up. And then he told me that the last thing to go when a person is losing their life is their hearing. So talk to him in the ear because he can still hear you. And I talked to him in his ear. And then after I talked to him in his ear, that was it. Well, I, you know, I was there when Rob was, um, we was at the juice bar. You know, Wop got a juice bar. He, well, had the juice bar on Walker Street. So he didn't want to go to dialysis anymore. And when you're going through uh, that stage where you just refuse to go through treatment, they have these spiritual people that are there to, like, help guide you through transitioning. That means you're transitioning. And you have people that are there to help you. So he had a um, a spiritual guidance counselor, like someone who was with him. Her name was Queen, is Queen. And that morning, Rob told her, he told her that night, I believe, to call me. And then that morning, she had called me and told me that Rob wanted me to come or she wanted me to come down to the, to the hospital, I mean, to the hotel to meet Rob. And when I got to the hotel, you know, I couldn't get in until she got there. Then when I got into the hotel, Rob was on the floor and he told me that he couldn't move in his legs. He couldn't feel his legs. And that's when, you know, what happened was the, 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 when it starts traveling, it starts breaking down your vital organs. So it, it went into, uh, I believe into, it started going into his lungs. You know, when things start going up into your body part here, that's when, you know, things is getting bad. Your body parts is going to shut down. And his body shut down on him. That's why his legs had gave out. Then his body shut down. Then when that happened, he passed. But I was with him right there. And um, surprisingly, he had a notebook. And on the inside of the notebook, it had Puff's number. And he kept telling me in the car to call Puff. And when he was telling me to call Puff, it wasn't like call Puff and tell him. He was like, call him and tell him I need this and I need to get an apartment. He didn't know he was dying. You know what I'm saying? He still thought he was going to get another apartment. And at the time, uh, Watt was talking to Puff and, and Puff was trying to help Rob, but I think the help was coming just a little too slow. You know, even though he may have been trying, but it just didn't happen fast enough. But when Rob passed, one of the first people that called me was him. He called on my FaceTime and he was like, you know, um, we're not going to let this be about me and you. We're going to let it be about Rob. And I said, I agree to that. He was like, uh, what do we need to do? I said, well, we're going to need to get one of his, his, his children down here, somebody to come claim his body. And he said, OK, call the office. I called the office, the, King, the Combs Enterprise office. As he said, he, he, he got Rob's uh, son and uncle out here. Um, pay for them to come here. Um, I, I think we might have got him to pay some for the funeral or something like that. Um, but he did come to help. He, that's when we talked again. And we don't never not speak. Like, I see Puff in the club, and, and we'll speak, and he'll be like, you know, we'll speak. But then it just be the security and people around him that always thought that it was a major problem. But if you, you know, at the end of the day, Sean Prez, and I'm sure you know it because we grew up to, like we was a family on that label. I, by no means, hate the man like that. This, you know, the business may be bad, and you know, it may, but I don't never wish ill upon him because I still know him as a friend. You know, so if we don't do business, that's one thing. But as a, as far as a friend, like as far as how they trying to scrutinize and 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 do his character now, I don't agree with it, and. I went and sit and throw rocks at it while it's going on. So during these times, you know, as him being a brother, you know, somebody that, you know, I, I definitely have a friendship with some kind of way, whether it be good, whatever it may be, you know, I say, and I speak in his defense and I say, you know, things like, no, he didn't do that. No, he didn't have anything to do with anything, Tupac's murder or none of that kind of stuff. I, Puff don't have nothing to do with, paying no gangs or nothing like that for security. 
these are just things that I know, right? But as him being that person, you know, that's just that, you know, um, and that's just because this thing, I, I never thought that I would possibly talk to you again. You know, it's a lot of friends that I lost um, during this ordeal. And to be able to speak to you again is something that made me feel, it makes me feel good to be able to talk to you again, because that means that we are friends and we're not just basing, you know, whether we like each other or our friendship or for a friendship we have with other people. You know me as a person and I know you as a person and, and we have a friendship. So I lost a lot of friends. There's a lot of friends I don't, you know, people just don't speak to me a lot anymore, like other artists. But it's okay. You know, one person that always did stick, that, that, that I always spoke to and always stuck with me was Black Rob. You know, I got to ask you, why, why do you believe Black Rob turned down getting his dialysis done and taking care of his health? He was tired. He was tired of it because he say like the dialysis, like he would tell me like after he come out of dialysis and if he went in dialysis on the Tuesday, it would have him tired all the way to Friday. So it was kind of like wearing him out. You know, um, when you start looking at a person's veins and arm is getting big from the dialysis, you know, when they putting it in, you know, doing the clearing his cleaning the system out. And he had just got tired of it. And and as use, people usually go through that stage where they say, you know what, I just don't want to do this anymore. I just want to give up. And what a lot of people call it is when people give up. And he had, it was like he was giving up and he didn't want to go. And, but that's a decision that he wanted to make, right? And if I had the power over it, over him, I can... I can take him to the doctor and they would still give him the treatment, even if he said he didn't want it. If I told him he needs to go and he needs to be there. But I wasn't in the position to to make them have to treat him. And he wanted to give up. That's the reason why he had Queen with him. Queen was there to, to comfort him during this transition. So Black Rob kind of, if you ask me, he knew what was going on. He knew what was going to happen. I should have asked you this earlier. Mm -hmm. How much of your publishing did you sign away? Uh, okay. When I initially did my publishing, when I did the, 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 the production deal, I gave them 50% of the publishing, something like that, right? So when the publishing company signs the deal with Puff, they're giving Puff the rights to use that contract. So when I signed over 50% of my publishing, that 50% of publishing then became part of Puff's that's his catalog now, because once he signed the production company to a deal, part of the deal went with pu publishing was included. Makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Yes. Um, you you were very vocal. Puff, Puff did something uh, recently, which is give all of the artists back their publishing. And you were very vocal with the fact that, you know, it wasn't as good of a deed as it seems to be on the surface. Why do you right, feel right, like that? Right, 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 definitely. Because um, if if had it had he had did it when uh, had he had done this when record stores were in existence or people were actually listening and buying our music, it would have been a different story. But nobody is really buying. Um, our music from back then now the, the world has moved on there's different ways of doing business as far as publishing they're streaming now there's no album sales so you're giving back something that the life has been drained out of it so it's almost like i, I said on the on on the on the interview or when i was talking i was like it's like giving me back my girlfriend after you took her from me and then had two kids with her now i got to sit in the house and look at her and my and your kids this wasn't a good feeling. I was like, you know, if you want to give something back, go back retro and say, you know what, I'm going to go back 10 years, five years. I'm going to give you what it was worth five years ago up until now. So it was almost like when I thought of it, you know, it's a good gesture to get a publishing back. But I kind of wanted, you know, I thought maybe, you know, 
he would, you know, retro it a little bit or give a little conversation, conversation with it. So, you know, cause it was a, it was a, it's not as, as, as pro, it's not, the streams don't create the revenue they used to create. So like right now they they don't create much money. So it's like you're giving it back after the money's not coming in the way it used to. So it's just it's a nice gesture, but what can we do with that? Did, did he, you know, did he like, himself or anybody from his office contact you in advance and let you know that this was going to happen? Definitely. He called, he, he called me on the three way once again on the FaceTime. It's the second time I spoke to him. And then let me tell you, Prez, he said to me, he's like, Curry, I'm ready to do the right thing and I'm taking this love thing serious. I said, well, if you're taking the love thing serious, then I stand by you. And then I said, he said, you know, um, so I just want you to know that I'm giving the artist back the publishing. I want you to know, be one of the first ones to know I'm giving you back your publishing. I was like, thanks. So you going to give me back the publishing? He was like, yeah. I said, so... As soon as you give it back to me, can you buy it? You know what I'm saying? I want you to buy it. I really don't want it. Can you buy it? Like, just give me an offer. He was like, nah, I'm going to give it to you, and I want you to do what you want to do with it. I said, well, I want to sell it to you. You know what I'm saying? And that's how that one went. You know, but he did. He caught me on the on the three-way. And then so I told him, I said, if you do the right thing, I do the right thing. He said, well, you do the right thing. Sean Perez, I took my book down from, for, uh, nobody could buy this book for at least three months. I took it all the way off the market and they started selling the book for $150. So I was like, whoa. And then he didn't actually follow up, follow up with what he said he was going to do. So I was just like, you know what? Let me just go ahead on and continue to do what I've been on. I put my book back up for sale. I never heard from him again. And that well, what was you it. mean he didn't do what he and said he was going to do? Yeah. You know, um, we we had a you know the reason you know why I took the book no. off from sale. You know why I stopped wow. selling it. I stopped selling it because I said, okay, if you're taking this love thing right, I'm I'll take you know I know what you want me to do, right? I stopped selling the book, right? And I, we I, I was a time I was trying to get to him like, okay, if I stop selling this book, this is how much money I make off the book a year, right? And if I'm going to stop selling this book, at least give me what I'm going to make off of the book. And I just totally, you, you can have it. You know what I'm saying? If you're taking this serious and it's about forgiving. So if he told me that, you know, Mark, I'm sorry, or forgive me, I would forgive him because you have to, you have to be able to forgive. Right. And a man can't really call himself a man if he can't control his emotions. So as a man, we're not going to put our emotions into it. We're going to say, okay, if that's what you want to do, then I'm with you. If you're willing, to, if you're ready to make that change in your life, I'm standing with you. But I, if I'm going to stand with you, I'm not going to have a book called Dancing with the Devil, How Puff Burnt the Bad Boys of Hip Hop, if you're trying to make that change. And he said he was trying to make that change. I said, okay. I stopped selling the book. I just never heard from him again. We never, he didn't have a follow up. But he did give you back your publishing. That was publishing. it. He gave me, but well, okay, let me, let me, and I can explain, let me explain something like this with publishing. Giving someone back their publishing is almost like, because the publishing made money. So if you're giving someone back their publishing, it seems like you would be giving them back the money that the stream made. When you're giving them back the publishing rights, that's another thing, but the money that the, the publishing made is different. So it's, if you're looking at publishing without money, publishing, like if the publishing stream is not making money, it's really not a good stream, right? So if you're giving back publishing and it's not making no money, it's almost basically like just giving you back the ownership to the music that you wrote, but the money is not there. That makes sense. The money's not there. For especially if you don't have a song like Bad Boy for Life, for an example, I still get emails from all over the nation about people wanting to use this song, two seconds of it on this. They want to use it on Super Bowl. They want to use it on this. And this is how much money they offering. And you see it. Certain songs that have those kind of legs, but other songs like, let's say, um, other songs we may have did on the album, um, Roll With Me with 8-Ball and MJG. 
that song giving me the publishing back on that. Nobody's really listening to that song anymore. And I highly doubt that they're going to call and want to put that song in a movie 10 years from now. So it's like giving back something that really doesn't have value. The value's not there. Understood. Um, but, you know, again, that, that's the beauty of publishing. Uh, you don't know who is going to use it and when. R- right now, I'm, I'm never know. Quite, I, I, I'm pretty sure that Mario Winans is somewhere ecstatic because The Weeknd and Metro Boomin used uh, that sample from I Don't Want to Know. Yeah, I don't want to know. You just don't mm-hmm. know. So, you know, right now, your publishing might not be worth what it once was, but who's to say, you know, we're living in an era right now where all of the kids, they're sampling music from the 90s and the early 2000s. Who's to say that a hit record is not going to be made tomorrow on one of your records, and that could be the thing that feeds your family for the next few years. So, you know, I just don't want you to be short-sighted just because you're publishing right. at this moment is not as valuable as it mm-hmm. once was. You, that don't mean tomorrow it's not going to be worth its weight in gold. Uh, d- 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 right. But you, you know, Press, I'm totally understanding, totally with you. But like, let's say before we did a deal with BMI and ASCAP, we did a deal with them for, uh, for performance rights, for when the song is played on the radio or when it's played on television. Then we did another deal, let's say EMI, Sony ATV, another publishing thing, and that was for the sales, the mechanicals, right? The sales and all of those kind of things, right? So now people are streaming more than they're buying records. They're streaming more than um, you're seeing it on TV or on the radio. We never cut a deal for streaming. So now they're streaming our music, right? But we never cut a deal for them to stream it. So it's just another way. uh, The music has gone into another direction as far as how it's being sold and how it's being, you know, um, how it's, you know, how it's being sold and who's buying it. It's different. And and streaming has kind of like taken over that. So Uh, even even though you didn't personally sign a deal for streaming, if the publishing is yours, Mm -hmm. the money is going to be collected on your behalf. So you didn't have to do the deal right. personally. You know, that that's why companies like ASCAP or BMI exist. You're still going to get your money. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but Right, but the rate that they pay for streaming is this, the yeah, rate that they pay for low. streaming it is. Um, yeah, is not it's very it. low. Yeah, it's super I, low. I agree with you 100% it's, it's, there. I, I got a question for you. Right. Aubrey O'Day was mm-hmm. very, very vocal uh, in warning artists Arby. Not to sign um, that contract to get their publishing back. NDA. W- was, was the contract yeah, the crazy in any way? No, nah, it was just like, you know, um, they just didn't want you to talk about Puff, the deal, whatever, you know, the business dealing that, you know, that he gave your publishing back. You're not supposed to talk about him or uh, not the bad boy company or Janice Combs, anything in that, that falls under that umbrella. But again, I told him I wrote a whole book about it and there's no way that I'm going to sign. I, I can't stop talking about my book. Not unless you want me to stop talking about the book, then we can pay for it and then I'll stop talking about it, right? But there's no way in the world I can, you, I'm grandfathered into my book. So my book was there before this contract come. So there was like really, that's another reason why when he was giving the publishing back and I was like, OK, if he said he's going to do the right thing, I was going to do the right thing because there's no way in the world for me to not promote my book without talking about him. And at that time, I was like, you know what? If that's what you want to do. I bet I'm with it. I'm going to stop. And I don't really promote the that, book. That's that what much. I was about to I go. Didn't do it. You wrote that book in 2009. It is now 2023. Mm-hmm. You you. 2023. Yeah, that, that book is at it's that 14 book is still years old. Selling. Yep, the Bible, the Bible was written longer than that. And this is the number one selling book in the world. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you got me on that one, Mark. You got me on that one. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so, so if you don't mind yeah. me asking, so if you don't like mind this. me asking, and, and it's all right if you say uh, I, I I don't want to share that information. 
But how well does your book sell to this date? Macy? And how how much revenue are you earning from it annually? I might make like last month. I made I sold a uh, hundred books last month. I might sell a hundred books, eighty books, ninety a month. But it's been going on like that since two thousand nine. So sometimes I get low because I stop promoting it. I don't get out and say anything about it. So I leave it alone. Then it might not sell that many, you know. But then once something hot, like when any time Puff does something in the news, the book starts selling out the roof. And what? And what's so, your you know, split with I, Amazon? I, 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 uh, Amazon, I got it um, for nineteen dollars. I sell the book. Um, I think they give me nine dollars, and they take nine dollars. Or seven, I might get seven eighty eight or nine dollars, but they handle the printing and the shipping and delivery. So um, that's like a pretty cool deal. I don't have to print any books. Uh, I don't have to worry about the order. They just order it straight from Amazon, whether it's Barnes and Nobles or wherever the bookstore may be. They get it right from Amazon. Amazon ships to them. Prints so you and ships. you seeing anywhere so, between seven hundred and about nine hundred a thousand dollars a month off your book. Okay, fair yeah. enough. I, yeah, sometimes a little lower, mm -hmm. sometimes lower, but like last month was a good month. This month is starting off as a, as a good month because people, are, you know, inflammation never gets old. One thing about a book, it, the, the, it'll always continue to always sell. So that's another reason why I wrote the book. It was another form of publishing that I felt like I wanted to get into. Oh you know, um, maybe write something that, you know, about my life and that, let it just keep on selling. And I don't have to keep going back to revisit it, you know? So that's why I wrote it. I wrote a book. Let me ask you something, you know, something interesting. After a conversation mm -hmm. like this, do you think that, um, anything was said that would make you say, yo, let me go write a part two to this book. Maybe the way I felt in 09 is not the same way that I feel in 2023 and I just see things a little different as a businessman, as an artist, but also as, mm -hmm. as a mature father, husband, uh, you know, just, just right. somebody who's getting older. The, the book was, right, the book was so, so much written about, you know, about me and my life that it's a story about me. So I don't think that I would ever change that because every time I read it, I, I open up the book and I just, it just reminds me of my life. So it's not nothing like uh, oh, you open up the book and then it's about puff, 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 puff. The book is not like that. It's not down bashing them or nothing like that. It's just about my life, you know, watching, you know, my mother and father dying, um, me trying to accomplish certain things before they pass, um, you know, losing family, things like that, all while trying to be this artist. Like so much stuff that I lost trying to chase this dream that if I had to do it again, I don't think I would I would do it again because I didn't spend enough time being a father. Um, I didn't spend enough time being a husband, a brother, a friend. I was spending more time being an artist and just chasing that. I was just chasing it, just wanted it. And I remember they say, if you chase something, that means it's running from you. So I stopped chasing it. Got you. Uh, got a couple more questions before I let you go. And I appreciate your time, Mark. And I also appreciate you just having uh, a very, very candid conversation, not taking any of the questions uh, personal, but but understanding that, you know, it's my job. I got to ask Press, you. Who can get Sean? Who can get <laughs> mad at Sean Press? Do you remember what you used to do? You remember how you used to be, yo, I, I, I always thought, like, Sean Perez, I always thought you was the coolest, most serious dude in the world. It was like, you can, if you catch Sean Perez, he might joke with you every now and then. But if we working and we got somewhere to go, if we need to be on stage or if we need to be doing something in order for the Sean Perez is going to stay on his job. You understand? So I could never get mad at Sean Perez. I never did ever, even when you used to have me in the wrong, the, the room with eight people. <laughs> Never nah, got but mad. you know, it, it almost you know it, it hurt you my remember feelings I... a few minutes ago when you said you thought we would never talk again, and um, you know, nah, man, I that did. that could never happen. I you did. you know me personally as a human being, uh, 
you know, what 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 you have going on and, and the way uh you see things with your experience there, that has nothing to do with you and I personally. And um, you know, I, I thank right. God that that we reconnected and you know you were able to see for yourself, like my brother, like I'm 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 here, I always been here. Um, just the same even with Black Rob mm-hmm. and so many of the other artists that are on the label. Like, of course, we didn't move, you know, day in and day out the way we once did. Everybody goes on and they, and they do what they do in their own personal lives, but absolutely not. Nothing like that. Nothing was ever personally done to me by you or so many of the artists that I love that we work with or or people like Harvey right. and Pierre or, or the behind the scenes. So, so you know... You know, I have, like, I tell you like this, though. One thing, one thing I, I could tell you a few artists that I, I haven't spoken to, and I sometimes I wish I could say hello to them, like Mario Winans. You know, I speak to Faith Evans. That's one thing I always reach out to her, and I speak to her at least once every couple of months. Um, like, Mario... Um, I did used to speak to Stevie. I don't think Stevie has any problems, but I don't speak to him as much no more. But we used to, I used to see him a lot. But um, so so let me ask you something, uh, Mark. And and again, I, I'm respectful of your time, so I'm sorry for cutting in right there. You know, Puff Puff has been honored right. a couple of times this year. Once yep. at the BT Awards, and and he was also honored. Um, at the MTV VMAs, he performed "Bad Boy for Life." Mm-hmm. He brought his son on. You know, can 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 you uh, yeah. when you see that performance, uh, does it open own wounds for you that you weren't invited there, or do you just understand? Look, the man is being honored, yeah. and you know he has a son that just had a number one record. He wanted to share that moment with his kid. Right, but if you remember, just. Or maybe a few weeks or not that you know long before that he said that he was giving all of the artists back they publishing and to give back the publishing plus to be able to perform to make more money off of it, it's like you know what why didn't you let the original artist from the song come do it and it was like he used his son and then he i think his daughters was dancing in the background and it was like man you know if you was really trying to create opportunity and trying to fix everything with people the way you said you was trying to do, you would have invited the original artist to let them perform on that song with you or on the songs with you. And it kind of just made his show go one verse and then an explosion, one more verse, then an explosion. And and, and if you really want to do it to, for the people, I know the people would have appreciated seeing him bring even just me out to say, you know what, um, we, you know, we put, we, I'm bigger, I'm big enough to put my, differences aside to do the right thing for the people so if the people want to see bad boy for life perform with the original right, let's just do it for the people you know but i didn't i saw it and i just man turned the tv off man honest you know no thing i was like man why you know if you if you really about this love thing the way that you're saying it then why didn't you invite me not saying you had to, but that would have been a big. That would I would have known. Okay, he did change. He's he's definitely for real. If you'd be like, can you come do Bad Boy for Life with me? Especially since Rob is gone. You know what I'm saying? And I think, you know, with him being gone, if we're gonna put put aside our differences, I think that would have been good because we could have did it for Rob. You know what I mean? But hopefully next time. I'm not saying that it might not be a time. Maybe, maybe he it was just his day to be, you know, to accept his greatness. But not with him. But maybe I hope that there is a time where he might would say, "Hey, you know what? For one more time, let's get on the road and let's perform our songs together." I say, "Okay." Let, let let's me do ask it. you something. In, in 2016, uh, there was a Bad Boy reunion tour. Were you invited on that tour? Nope. I wasn't invited on the tour. And, you know, that's that's just, you know, that's the boss. He's he the boss, right? He didn't invite me. 
Um, nope. Nope. The same way they didn't invite me to Miami for the um when they was working on this album. Same way. Always, I don't never get invited to nothing like that. That's kind of stuff. Except when you was at when you was there, you stay calling me. Your flight is coming. Your flight is tomorrow. Don't miss your flight. This, 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 that, and the third. The show is at. We're going to do MT Awards. Out of that. So you're not there. So it's like we don't get those calls no more. So I wonder if I don't get them just because you're not there. <laughs> I bet you if you was there, I would have got it. I don't know, man. Um, you know, <laughs> Mark, it, it kind of breaks my heart um, that that this this is your story. Um, and, and I was hoping that in this conversation that whatever, whatever ill feelings you have, not about it, Puff, but about that time in your life, you know, maybe it would give you mm -hmm. a, a different perspective. Maybe it would give you a different way to look at things and say, because you got so much good going on for you. Uh, I, I know, I know you rehab mm -hmm. houses. Um, you know, you're a family man. Yep. You're doing your thing. You got a home. So, you know, I, I really was hoping that this conversation would just give you a different perspective, shed a little light. That possibly, yo, you know what? Life is short. I, 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 I don't know how much longer Definitely. any of us got. Let me move on. And, right. and, 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 and you know, the past was the past. We can't change it. But what I am in control of is my future. And I want my future to be bright. That's right. That's right. That's why I started doing music. And I got those new tracks that I put out. You know what I'm saying? And, and and I hope everybody takes a little time to listen and support them because I said, you know what? I let the music, I, I, I always said that. I think even when I walked and I, I said I was going to do the book, I, I, it was at that time when I said that I was moving on. That was my point of moving on right then. So, you know, I moved on and, and uh, hey man, I look for, I just do the music now and, and let the music speak and it speaks. So it's, it, I had to wait for a long time in order to be able to do music again. And I'm 52. Just imagine coming out at 52 and saying, you know, I want to do music again. I'm there. I'm doing it. I feel good by doing it. And it, I definitely, I definitely have a love for it. So that, to be able to talk to you, to be able to put that in the past, the past, let the past be the past, and to look forward to what I can do, that's definitely a major step. I, I look forward now to what I can do now. I don't I don't think about the past. I don't that's why I never really promoted the book much, because I'm like, let I let the book go. Let let if you wanna people wanna ask questions about the book, I say just buy the book, because everything that you wanna ask me is in the book. You know, I move on, let's talk about something different. You know, like interesting things. You know, my grandmother, one of my grandmothers is the first black lady to own a record label in New York City. Mm. Her name is Zell Sanders. Yep. So we've been going through the publishing thing with chess records and things like that for a long time. So I just ain't just now get into the business. It's like I'm a, I'm a, I was damn near born into it, you know. But to, 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 so we just know I'm, I'm not upset about anything you know like when i see certain people like let's say gene deal which i understand what he what he's on but i'm not he seems to sometimes to still be he you can just hear it in his voice upset and anger when he speaks and i remember when i first did the book i would be upset when i would speak about puff but then now when i speak about him on the i can't get upset it's like I wind up smiling and laughing and just thinking about, you know, the stuff. It really makes you laugh sometimes. Not, it don't really hurt you. It makes you laugh. So I traded all of that in just to be able to laugh. Let, let me ask you something. What was your relationship like with Gene Deal? Gene was the security. I didn't, only thing, you know, Gene was security. Like, you know, the same, you know, when you go in the Puff Lounge, Security is there at the door. The security is downstairs in front of the studio. Uh, the, stu the, the security is riding around the car with Puff when we going somewhere. We on the road. 
Puff is in that car with the security. Gene Deal was usually one of the ones he was with, but he was security. He was a security. He was securing Puff. So, so from from your perspective, and, is there any legitimacy to any of the stories that Gene Deal be telling? Um, can I say this? Um, and I will say, you know, his where there's smoke, there's fire. And I, I definitely have to respect Gene Deal for his 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 thoughts and his words. So the only thing I ever would say is me personally, I can't stay upset with someone longer than probably like Sean Prez, man. Sometimes I can't stay upset with somebody longer than an hour sometimes. I argue with my girl and it'd be one of the craziest arguments in the world the next 10 minutes. We like what we're going to eat because we move on. I can't stay upset like that. So once you stay upset for so long, that's a sign that that's eating you up. And a sign of moving on is like, I can't get upset about it anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't look at it in a negative. Somebody be like, um, uh, they, I think somebody asked me the other day, tell me something that I remember about Puff that was fun. And I brought up, going to the Bahamas and recording that album. You know what I'm saying? Then I think of the good things. Sometimes I don't always just think of the bad things. I think of the good things a lot. You know what I'm saying? So today, as a man at 52 years old, at 52, I'm too old to be walking around upset. I got to be worried about how I'm going to get medicine when I need it when I get older and things that I need to take care of in order to stay healthy. I can't be upset. So when you ask me about him, I just can't see how long he's going to be upset before just to move on, let it go. Like, but I don't know his whole story, but I just couldn't be upset. Well, let's end it there on a positive note. You know, um, you know, Mark, it, it was a good time speaking to you. I know some of this conversation, uh, you know, it hit touch, it hit touchy points. It hit points that you know, you and I might not see eye to eye on and other points where I just wanted to, to at least uh, be an objective point of view. And um, you, you sat through it and you handled it honorably and, and I appreciate it. And, and I'm glad that we could end this conversation in a good place. So, you know, as always, I wish you the best, my brother, uh, you know, I, I thank you for sitting down with me, and 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 I'm always here, as I always was. So let's you know Amen. hook up and do this thing again sooner than later. All right, and I I appreciate you because this definitely um this definitely changed something about me, and what it did change about me is now I feel like everybody's not upset to know that you know to talk to you. It makes me feel good because it feels like I know I got a friend. I still got a friend in you. So thank you for being my friend. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Too. We definitely going to do it again, brother. Keep that yes. positive energy up and, and the friendship. It don't go nowhere. The love don't yes. go nowhere. Salute. Man. Yeah. The next one, the next time, I just want us to get together and talk about what you think about my new music. And then, because the new music is going to speak for itself. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Absolutely. I mean, you've always been dope, Mark. you always been dope. I, I, I second you on that one. Boy, I got some, I got some, I got some fire. Right? And and the young kids be like, Unk, why are you snapping like that? I be like, wow. And guess what? In none of my songs do I talk about and, and you shouldn't. And you shouldn't. If if you talk if you talking about, about something no thirty song. that happened thirty years ago twenty five years ago you ain't grow brother but peace and love we gonna end it here oh yeah <laughs> salute what's up guys thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video truly appreciate you if you like anything you heard here today go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you know anybody that can benefit from this message feel free to share peace and love make every move a power move. I'll catch you all on the next video.